medcram.com. Well, welcome to another MedCram lecture. We're talking about hypoxemia, and today's topic is shunting. We've talked briefly about high altitude, diffusion, and hypoventilation. The, the fourth mechanism that we want to talk about is the shunting mechanism. And uh, this is a little bit different than the previous two. And I'd like to sort of diagram what exactly is a shunt. Okay, so if we look at the pulmonary vascular system, we start out with the pulmonary artery, and it's in blue because it's deoxygenated. And of course, it ends up in the pulmonary vein, which is oxygenated. And the way to look at this is two different systems. So I've drawn this so that it's pretty easy to tell that 50% is going in this direction and 50% is going in this direction. This is what we call a 50% shunt. So that a 50% of the blood goes to, in this case, the lungs and 50% is going to a shunt or basically it's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere where there isn't it's not going anywhere where there's an alveoli or the ability for oxygen to get to it. Okay, so these are the lungs. Oxygen can come here. Oxygen can't come here because it's being shunted away from the lungs. And so even though I've drawn this with kind of a blue and red, you must understand that there is no O2 coming here whatsoever. And this is exactly what a shunt is. It's a 50% shunt, as I mentioned. But it doesn't have to be 50. You can have less, you can have more. I'm just making it 50% for illustrative purposes. Now, before we get started with that kind of a discussion, I want to sort of uh, give you a little bit of a background about the red blood cells. As you know, red blood cells carry oxygen. And they look like this kind of from the side because there is no nucleus. Well, inside each red blood cell is the hemoglobin molecule, which is actually made up of four binding parts. We'll talk a little bit more about this later. And this is where oxygen binds to it. And you get something called the hemoglobin oxygen dissociation curve, which basically looks like this. Okay? And basically, PO2 is on the bottom and saturation is on the side. And what it says is as PO2 goes up, so does the saturation, but there comes a point where increasing PO2 doesn't increase the saturation that much more. The important thing to take from this is that this goes to the body after the left ventricle pumps it, and the amount of oxygen that is delivered to the body, so the DO2, is directly proportional to the saturation of oxygen. So that's going to be very important, is the oxygen saturation. That's the lion's share of oxygen that is delivered to the peripheral tissues. And so what I want to do here to avoid confusion is talk a little bit about the saturation of the blood in the pulmonary artery. So pulmonary artery blood is basically blood that is coming back to the heart. It is not oxygenated. It is blood that has already been spent oxygenation-wise in the tissues. And the saturation of blood in that area is about 70 percent. So if you were to get a pulse oximeter or some sort of way of measuring the saturation of oxygen in the venous blood that gets eventually pumped to the pulmonary artery, the answer is 70 percent. And in normal situations, this blood goes to the lungs and gets reoxygenated and it comes back to the pulmonary vein to the left uh, atrium, left ventricle, gets pumped out to the body. But in a shunt situation like we have drawn here, where in this case, 50% of the blood is diverted away from it, let's go through and figure out the arithmetic about what happens. So we've got 70% saturated blood here, and we've got 70% oxygen saturated blood here. Well, because there's lungs here, that area becomes oxygenated. And let's just say that it becomes oxygenated up to the point that it is now 95% saturated with oxygen. Well, in the shunt side of this, that 70% blood, 70% saturated blood doesn't get to see any alveoli. And so it remains 
at 70% saturated. Now, because this is 50% of the blood, and this is 50% of the blood, when these two combine in the pulmonary vein, you simply, what you have here is the arithmetic mean of these two saturation. Obviously now, if it's a smaller shunt fraction, this 70% is not gonna have as much weight. But because I've said it's a 50% shunt, meaning 50% of the flow is going to the lungs, and 50% of the flow is not going to the lungs, and in fact never sees the lungs, the arithmetic mean of 70 and 95 is, the difference between these two is 25, half of 25 is 12 and a half, 12 and a half plus 70 is 82.5% saturation. That is definitely a situation where you have pulmonary hypoxemia, okay? So hypoxemia is caused by this shunt fraction. So as a result of that, even though you've got good oxygen here in the alveoli, you see, and that's capital A, you see that your lowercase a is low. That means you're gonna have an increased AA gradient. What about if we give 100% oxygen? And, and this is probably the most important point to understand in this whole lecture, is what happens next when we add 100% oxygen. So we're gonna add, we're gonna add 100% oxygen. Now what's gonna happen when we add 100% oxygen? That 100% oxygen is going to affect this side of the equation, okay? But it's not going to affect this side of the situation because this shunt, by definition, is not seeing any oxygen in the lungs. Now, when we give 100% oxygen to this side, what's gonna happen over here? The blood, which is 70% saturated, instead of it going to 95% saturated, remember here's our hemoglobin binding curve. It's gonna go up like this. And whereas at this PO2, the oxygen saturation was 95. Now if we give 100% oxygen, that's essentially 760 millimeters of oxygen. We're gonna be way off the scale over here, but we're only gonna be up to 100%. So instead of 95, let's say that the new saturation for just the blood coming off this limb is now 100% saturation. But because this area here never got to see the 100% oxygen because by definition it is a shunt, we still have 70% in this limb. And instead of having an 82.5% saturation, the new saturation is going to be only 85%. Now this is something that's different in response to high altitude, diffusion, hypoventilation, what we'll talk about later is VQ mismatch. And this is a very important point is that 100% oxygen treatment in these type of hypoxemias do not really improve your hypoxemia. And that's a clue that the mechanism of action here is, is a shunt. Okay, so let's review shunting. The first thing that we said, and this is probably the most important, is that it does not respond to 100% oxygen. That's the first time we've come across one of those. It does have an increased AA gradient. Now what are some examples? Well, if you look at the heart, and here is my schematic drawing of a heart. We've got the intraventricular septum. We've got the tricuspid valve and the mitral valve. Any type of a situation where blood on the right side of the heart goes over to the left side, so like an ASD or like a VSD, or even like a patent ductus arteriosus, uh, if it's going from the left to the right, that could do it as well. In this situation, you're gonna have right to left shunting. Now these are congenital heart anomalies, but I can think of another reason why you could have right to left shunting and that would be in something called ARDS. What is ARDS? Well, in ARDS, remember your alveolus looks like this, okay? And you've got your capillary coming in like this, and it gets oxygenated, and it comes out like this. But in ARDS, ARDS stands for acute 
respiratory distress syndrome. This is a situation where a lot of basically hyaline containing high protein uh, fluid leaks out into the alveolus. If you would like, you can imagine that there's just basically fluid in the alveolus. So in fact, what happens when oxygen tries to get down there, there is no oxygen that can come through. And as a result of that, this deoxygenated blood goes right through without seeing any oxygen whatsoever. So that's another way you could have uh, shunting. Also pulmonary edema could also do this. So that does it for shunting. Thanks for joining us.